and you praise the lord everybody praise the lord everybody once again this is testimonial tuesday i come to give god praise glory and honor to god be the glory ah for the wonderful things that he has done truly he is the head of my life and beside him i will serve no other ha ah! First, give an honor to my Lord Jesus Christ and my Savior. And I want to give honor where honor is due to my very own Bishop, Bishop Glenn A. Staples. And of course, in the persons of Pastor Lamar Staples, our senior pastor, Pastor Lamar Staples, and our very own First Lady Aisha Staples. I promise you, this next guest right here, oh my goodness, this powerful, wonder, wonderful woman of God has a testimony from on high. And I'm pretty sure it's going to set someone free. It's going to heal somebody. It's going to deliver somebody. And to God be the glory for the wonderful things that he is doing in her life, in her, through her, for his people. Amen. Amen. I promise you, I will not be before you long. And before we go any further, I just want to lift a, a quick prayer up to God. Amen. Most holy, wise, eternal father, we just come to you, oh God. God, I'm asking now in the name of Jesus that you hide us behind the cross, oh God, and that you hide us in your tabernacle, oh God, and God, that you will have your divine oh way, oh God. God, I pray even now that you decrease us and increase on your spirit on today, oh God. God, give your woman servant the words to say to thy people, oh God, that will snatch them ah, out of the darkness into the marvelous light, oh God. And God, ah, that someone will come running at the end of this broadcast saying, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved? God, we give you glory. We give you honor and we give you praise. It is in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. I do pray and ask of all these things in your son, Jesus name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading, if you have your Bibles, our scripture reading for today will be coming out of 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. And it begins by saying thus, ah, therefore, uh -huh, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Yeah, yeah. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And God's word is already blessed. Amen, amen, amen. I promise you will we we will not be before you long but there is a word there is a word from the lord through testimony the bible also says in revelation 12 and 11 and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimonies and they love not their lives even until the death i'm trying to tell you i'm so excited i can't wait to hear what thus said the lord through this powerful woman of god and i ain't gonna i ain't gonna prolong this i ain't gonna prolong this i've been anticipating her testimony all day long you hear me when i tell you me and this sister right here woo, when we get on the phone it's like no other but i promise you i won't <clears throat> I won't hold you long. I present to some ah, and introduce to others our very own evangelist, Nicole Barnes. Put your hands together and give her some praise as she come on, as she begins to click. There she is, to God be the glory. Look at the glow, look at the glow, look at the glow. To oh, God be the glory. Lord. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. How are you? How are you? Um, How is God in your life? I am Fine. I am fine. And I am so honored. I no, am so honor honored. Is mine. No man. <laughs> mine. Well, I guess it's mine. I guess it's mutual. The, the Bible do say iron sharpens iron, and the yes, friends shall see their countenance. But sis, yes, I am so honored that you you say yes, first of all, to God. And that you said yes. When God told me to go to evangelist Nicole Bonds, I said, okay, sure. Because I know she's going to be obedient into what he told her to do. <laughs> and sure enough, sis, I am so ecstatic that you decide to say yes and allow God to use you in such a fashion. Other than the ministry that you already, you, you vandalize, you evangelize, and that you pray for the people. And that you do stuff behind the scenes. But sis, before I go any further, just tell the people who who is it that you are in christ and how did you come i guess that's my first question how did you come to know 
Jesus. Um, first, I'm giving honor to my father, who is God. Yes. So I am a daughter of the most high God. Amen. All right. I am the daughter of he who died and rose again. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I am God's daughter. You hear what I say? I am. His Amen. Daughter. He snatched me out of a dark place. He snatched me out of an unclean place. Of course, like everyone else, we came in by the way of sin and was shaping in iniquity. I was born into it, right? That's what his scriptures say, but that mm -hmm. is not true. I am the only one of my mother's children who was not born out of wedlock. However, the enemy still had a plan, but God has a greater plan. God has mm. not God in me, God did my God. Me in that dark place. He snatched me out of sin, be it sexual, drugs, um, multiple relationships, um, a young mother. Um, God brought me from a long way. I gave birth to my first child at 13. See, and by the time I was 21, I had all six of my children. Um, had been through two abortions, one miscarriage, all from the age of 13 to 21. I was a child and I was going through all of this and I grew up in Catholicism. I was born into Catholic Catholic ways of doing things. And they didn't even go that deep into that. They just, you know, they went to church, but Catholic was the way. And, um, in the midst of that, there was a mm -hmm. statue that was in the church all the time. It never moved. It stayed on this wall. But I will always wonder who that man is that's hanging on that cross. There were some situations I went through. Mm. God would um, allow me moments where I would <coughs> ask, where, who am I? Where would I be if I wasn't here? I needed to know um, what this really is. I would just lay there. I'm talking to God, but I didn't know that I was talking to God. And um, around about the age of 17, no, I'm sorry. Let me back up. At the age of 14, my grandfather, who was a preacher, he used to pray over me all the time and he would pray in the Holy Ghost. And I would always look up and say, what is that? Because whatever that is, that's what I want. And he eventually... Mm -hmm. Um, told my grandmother, if y'all don't put this girl girl in a word church, she's not going to make it. He gave the, mm. the word of the Lord saying that there's two major events that's going to take place in her life and it's going to be, she's going to be raped and she's going to have more children than her mother. He oh my didn't God. At that time that I was being raped periodically by my stepfather. Um, and then I did end up having, my mother has four children, I have six. I did end up having two more children than my mother, just like God said. However, at the age of 17, mm -hmm. I walked into Jericho at the time, um, We it, the old Jericho, the Kenilworth Avenue Jericho, and walked right into salvation. God called me, I answered. Um, I ran back and forth for some time, of course, because I'm 17. Don't really know the truth. I'm not really being taught the truth. Um, I'm not having a full understanding of who Christ is and what it is that he really did do for me. Um, I'm not getting any of that. So, you know, with a young mindset and an immature mindset, you're in and out of all of that. Just like everybody else in the city, well, not everybody, but some of us in the city, you know, you young, you got kids, it's welfare, it's food stamps, it's all of that. Um, and you doing the best that you can. So, mm -hmm. you know, you just got to come on mm -hmm. through that. But in that, I still learned tenacity. I still learned how to be a mother before it was time to be a mother. I still had to learn how to take care of home. Um before it was really time to take care of home. I was out on my own since I was 16. Um, I'm being put out, you know, periodically because my stepfather still lives in the household with us. And from time to time, he had such control over my mother. I had to, I had to go. Both of us couldn't stay in the same house because he could still have control. Mm. Um, right. At 14. I'm hustling. I mean, I'm so my rebellion was so strong that 
I've already had a child at this point. I'm out in the street. I'm hustling. I mean, I'm talking about we cooking coke, okay? We cooking it. We selling it. We traveling with it. We packing guns. I got a 12 gauge in my closet in my mama's house. Not my own. Wow. In my mama's house. Because at that point, my mama- Wait a minute, wait a minute. I got, I got to stop you. Wait a minute, sis. I, I got to stop you right there. How You was cooking crap? We was cooking the coke to break it down. You say coke. you was cooking crack? We was cooking raw coke to break it down to crack. I'm 14. Okay? We, I don't come to lie. Because see, in testimony, see, that's why they stopped testimony service in the church. Because people start lying. And people can't get free if you're going to tell a lie. People can't get free if you're going to hide what the truth really is that God really bought you from. Or if you're going to hide it, are you really free? No, ma'am. I'm free. I come to tell the truth because there's some children out there. There's generations behind us that are lost, that want a way out. They don't have nobody to talk to that they can be quote unquote real with, but people not being real with them. Um, they're not going to tell them about the sexual bondage that they were in. They're not going to tell them how they was out there really smoking and drinking, stayed in the clubs, ripping and running. the. I mean, lived in the streets. There's nowhere in the city that you could take me. I ain't already been. There's nowhere in the city that you could take. There's not a club you could probably name that I was not in, that I was not partying in, that I did not have a boyfriend. I stayed with a boyfriend okay we did not live a life without a boyfriend until christ snatched me up and said okay come on come on come on we're gonna have to stop this baby mm -hmm. let me teach you things let me show you my way people don't want to give that truth to the children to let them see there is freedom or even adults because there's still some adults that are in bondage right um but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who's going to open them and say, no, this used to be me. Let me show you the way. Let me show you the path to God. Let me show you how there is a door open in the spirit that needs to be closed in your life. But God got another door that's going to bring you into the blessings of God, that will bring you into salvation, that will bring you into healing and deliverance. Because the trauma of the mind, we got a way that we try to deal with it or cope with it, be it drugs, sex, money, boys, girls, whatever you want to name it, we're going to do it. Alcohol, mm -hmm. all that. My father was an alcoholic. He had to be put out when I was a young girl, which allowed my stepfather to come in, who from the age of five, from that day forward, life had never been the same. So I dare not sit here and we supposed to testify of God's goodness and how I really overcame when it wasn't nothing but Jesus Christ and his blood, Jesus and his mercy and his grace. When he called, I had to answer. Did I stay originally? I didn't. I did not. It wasn't until after by the, let me see, 21, I had all my children. By 23, I was married. Married, eight kids, because I had six, he had two. We running a whole household, like full, mature, 30, 40, 50 year old people. And I was a baby, so broken, so lost, didn't know, had no understanding. My maturity wasn't there. It was none of that. After going through with my, my husband, God. we. First of all, even in marriage, I, I told you, my rebellion was so strong in them streets. My mother said, there's nothing I could do with this girl. God's going to have to do it. Who has to say that about a 14-year-old girl? I'm going to give you a little lead way about a boy. Because, you know, in the black culture, it's boys going to be boys. No, that's wrong, too. However, but who has to say that about a girl? That's unacceptable. I shouldn't have to say no, right, right. I have to let my daughter go because it's nothing I can do with her at 14. So we hustling, we carrying guns in my mama house. My boyfriend staying in my mama house with me. Okay. He lived upstairs on the third floor. All right. So I go upstairs with him. We living like we a married couple, 14. 
14. My God. My God. We in the grocery store. We paying bills. We going shopping. We we do we doing it up. We running a whole household. Fourteen. I was fourteen. He was so 15. let me let me ask. Okay, let me ask you this. I mean, because I I you gave me so much in there, and and I know I don't even know where to start, sis, because you gave me so much. But I mean, to God, for the no no, it's it's not my bad. It's for the simple fact. You've been through a lot, so therefore you got a lot to say. And it's okay because you are an overcomer of everything that you went through. And, and this is the key factor. This is the key factor what I heard you said. My God, thank you, Jesus. I heard you say that most people to this day don't want to be transparent to the fact where, in, in so many words, let, let me say this correctly. They don't want to tell on themselves because we put on this mask that, we're holy sanctified and we we're we're untouchable we 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 don't sin no more as if you know what i'm saying even though you was 14 you was trying the street life but god still had his hand on you <laughs> let me tell you how much he and, did. And, let me tell you how much he still had his hand on me at 15 i was standing in the 711 on minnesota and benning road it is around about three o'clock in the morning. We out in the streets. We just hanging out, simply just hanging out. We had a friend that worked in the 7-Eleven that I was down there talking to. Mm -hmm. so around the backside of the, when you come in the 7-Eleven, you go around the backside of the counter. I'm standing back mm -hmm. there and a guy walks up and put a gun to my head and say, give me all my God. Or the female dog is dead. The, the guy, my friend that worked there, he said, come on, man, you ain't got to do that. Bro, man, cocked that gun and said he cocked it. He let that safety off and he said, I'm not playing. Give me what's in that register or she dead. Put that gun to my head. He went on and gave him everything that was in there. He went on out the door. That could have been the end of my life right there. Then I would have been gone ahead. That could have been that could have been an end of your life right there. But God said, no, 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 not God so. Said, God said, no, 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 no. I, I know the thought in the plans that I have towards you. Thoughts okay. of good and not of evil. It your 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 story ain't gonna end like this. Because I'm I got my goodness. hand on you and I got some work for you to do. She's going to tell her my goodness. But wait a minute. She's tell her my grace. Wait a minute, sis. I'm trying to, your, his grace is sufficient. She's going to tell her wait, power. wait. She's, when She's I gonna tell you, you gave her so much wait, you, you, Come on now. Now listen, listen. I heard you say you at the age of 14 and 15, you was doing drugs. You was out on the corner. You had a gun put to your head. You were sexing. You was doing these things that wasn't pleasing unto God. And God still had his hand on you. And I all I also heard you say how you was molested. Now, that alone, that, that alone is enough to take out a young lady at your age. That alone, that that alone, because it what it does, it it takes you in the realm of I'm unworthy of myself now. Mm -hmm. Even as a child, we still tend to go that route as adulthood, mm -hmm. because because we was put it this way: our spiritual, our spiritual sense and our natural sense was snatched away from us. Mm -hmm. So now you're trying to endure life and find yourself all at the same time. So mm -hmm. I can I can only imagine what you had to endure far as now in womanhood, because it's 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 about spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. You first had to confront your issue of you being molested and those things, you selling drugs and things of that nature. And not only that, once you confront it, you had to confess. You know, that it was an issue there so you can conquer it. You had to confront it. You had to confess it so you can conquer it. My As a child, I was the first time my stepfather, um, when he began to molest me, I was six. Um Penetration, the actual rape thereof, took place at seven. 
and it continued mm. periodically until I was 12. And it was so much so that my first daughter, um, the last time my stepfather had sex with me was the first time I had sex with my boyfriend. When I came up pregnant eight months later, because we didn't find out until I was eight months pregnant, um, when the question my grandmother asked me was, who were you pregnant by? And my it God. was about either my stepfather or my boyfriend. And that started a whole nother world of things. Now, coming from a family, now I was born in the 70s. You know, back then, sex talk was pretty much taboo for us. We didn't talk about sex. I knew mm -hmm. nothing about sex. I didn't even know what sex was. And later on, in my walk with God, when he began to deal with the rape and deal with the molestation and the trauma thereof, one of the things I had to ask God was, why you let this happen to me? My God. Yeah. Why did you allow someone to take from me something that was so precious? Something, take it stripped me of my innocence. I didn't know. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know how much of a treasure it was. I didn't know how I should have kept myself. I didn't yeah. know, you know, what, who should, who shouldn't, what's supposed to touch you, what my cadence should have been sexually. I don't, I didn't know none of that. Nobody talked to me about any of that. So mm -hmm. something so powerful to overtake me at such a young age, mm -hmm. um, I thought that it was very unfair. And then, so all I knew when I got in a relationship was to have sex. But not only did that spirit continuously follow me. Come um, on now. Throughout life, because, you know, most people that you connect with in that time, that is a, someone who's just as perverted or full of lust as you are. And we don't want to tell the truth about that. And we wonder why we end up in the same cycle or the same type of relationship or with the same kind of man or the same kind of woman. This is why it is the light kind following you. It is what is in you is what you're going to attract. Yeah. So, if you're not going to come to a place where you can honestly say, God, this is me. God, this is what I like. This is what I want. This is what my appetite is. This is what I hunger for because that thing becomes hungry. That thing needs to be, needs to be filled. But the thing about less than perversion is never fulfilled, ever, ever. It will never be fulfilled, but it will be satisfied for the moment. It's like the appetizer. So you eat an appetizer, but I want more to eat. As you continue mm -hmm. down that road, you get full for the moment. And then I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. It's no different. And the people that you're around, it feeds it. The pe the behaviors that you're around, it feeds it. Pornography feeds it. And the more you watch in that mess, it's constantly feeding it. The more mm. you masturbate, it's constantly feeding it. That Come on here. It's stronger. It's getting larger. It is enlarging itself. But we want to believe that, no, I'm not hurting anybody um, this is just me i'm talking about all the way down to playing with toys come on i'm gonna get in the business we talking about sexual toys all of that it's feeding all of that so when you come to god and he call you and you answer and he begins to strip you of all these behaviors he begins yeah. Tell you to fast. I want you to fast and pray. I want you to break every relationship you got. I want you to be with me. It's just you and I. I want you to get to know me. I want intimacy with you. I want you yeah. to, to trust me. I want you to believe my word. I want you to eat my word. I want you to eat the whole stuff. And you like, well, wait a minute, hold on. Who are you? First of all, let's start there. Who are you? Okay, you're God. All right. But I want to introduce myself to you as father. I want to show you who you really are. And most of us have broken relationships with our daddies. And then the last father that I had, he raped me. So what makes it any different for you? 
My God. You believe that you're going to treat me any different. How do I know I can really surrender my all to you? And you my not going to me of something too. You not going to rape me of something too. How do I know this? How can I know? A God? I don't even see you. You want me to trust you? You want me to believe you when you allow? Once I learned who he was, it's a, you allow this to happen? How? How? How can this be? Okay, sis, okay. Okay, well, let me say this. Let me let me ask right there. Let me put a pin in it. Because now you're questioning God, and you know, as children, you don't ever supposed to question God. You don't, even wow. as adults, you don't question God. But David I come to beg, I come to beg the difference in a David certain David. sense. David. Listen, listen now. Listen, listen now. I come to beg the difference in a certain sense. If I don't question you, not to question your motives or your 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 your, to, your um intent towards me not in that sense of questioning but like you asked why are you allowing this to happen to me if i don't question you how do i know what answer that I'm, i need to hear from you and with saying all this I, my my next question we ain't even in my second question but i'm gonna go here my next question is at what point at what point did you say, God, I had enough. I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm coming to you. Now that you, even though my father has done me wrong, I now can trust you as my father. Because the Bible says when your mother and father forsake you, the Lord will take you up. And in a sense, your father forsook you because he violated you. But now you have to look to the father ah, who you haven't never seen. Who you, who, you know what I'm saying? So now you have to look to a, a man of God who you've never seen and put all your trust in him. And with assurance that, guess what? That hurt that your biological father did to you. I'm not that father. Mm -hmm. I'm the father that if you call on me mm -hmm. and the wee part of the hours, I'm going to come and see about you. You need to understand, daughter, my promises are surely yes and amen. <laughs> oh, my mama, you need to understand the love I have for you is unfailing. It's undying love for you. And I don't come to hurt you, but I come to wrap my loving arms around you. Yeah. So I guess, I guess yeah. now you're taking me to my second question, which is really, I'm about to push back the third one, but <laughs> Hold on. what? you asked one question. Hold on. You asked me, when did I get tired? Right. When did you get tired? So. I got saved when I was 17. I left again. I was in and out during that period. Married, met my ex-husband, um, disobeyed God, married him. When he flat out said no, everything around us said no. Our counselor said no. Um, we would meet with a marriage counselor because um, around about 96, was the ending of when I really came, started coming to the end of myself in 96. And um, we went to church. He, we were breaking up and he said, you know, and I had some things going on that was just completely just too much. And he said, you know, I know a lot of this is my fault, but let me do, do this one thing before I leave. Let me take you to church. And I cussed him out all the way to church. I mm. mean, all the way to church. And, um, we got there, and of course, Apostle Betty P. Peoples, rest her soul, she was ministering that day. And of course, God was talking directly to me, gave my life to Christ immediately. I rededicated. We went on down, and we developed counselors. In the midst of having, having these counselors, um, they counsel, you know, the relationship. We already living together. They know the whole scenario. But still, the answer was no. On the day we got married, we went to the justice of the peace. We were just dressed in all black. That's death all by itself. Let's start. Ah, ah, ah. Hey, sis. No, seriously, we were. We were dressed all black. Let's go to this justice of the peace. Let's let's do this. Okay. We this has been long waiting because we were together three years before mm -hmm. we got married. Okay. We get there. You talk about a root of escape. We get there, the man goes on lunch break for an entire hour. You think I would get up and walk out? No, 
I didn't. After constantly being cheated on by my ex-husband, I mean constantly, possible babies, girls calling the house, all of this old kind of stuff. It's just a mess. Okay. I but you still away. went forward. You still I, went forward. I still went. With that rebellion spirit, you still With said the rebellion spirit. And wait a minute, this was after you got saved. After, come on, take off okay. the mask now. Okay. Come on, I'm, I'm okay. listening. Go ahead now. I still disobeyed. Come okay. on here. I wanted what I wanted. I wanted a husband. I wanted the children. I wanted a safe household. I want a house. I want a car. All that. Got all of it. We bought a house. We had cars. It wasn't nothing. He was the best team player that I could ever have. He was the best provider. He was an excellent daddy to my children. This was a good man, but the streets still had him too. So we got married, went on. My mother, my uh, counselor at the time found out about it. When she found out, she said, did you marry that man? I said, yes, ma'am. I did. She said, Nicole, you deliberately disobeyed me. She said, no, you didn't disobey me. You disobeyed God. And My now God. you're detriment to go through everything you get ready to walk through. Yeah. I didn't understand what that meant, but I heard what she said. After that, not long after that, maybe about a good six months, that's when we moved into the new house. Right over in Landover. I wanted to be closer to my church. The church was moving. We moved. Everything. I'm heavily involved in ministry. All of this. When I tell you literally all hell broke loose, it was so much going on that I started to write down everything this man was doing because I knew I was going to get a divorce. The girl that he was dealing with, they wrote checks on a closed account that we had, um, which an account was closed for two years. They was writing bad checks, go turn the stuff in, get the cash from it. But my name is on it. Yeah. This messing up my credit. Come on here. Everything. I mean, we were fighting like nobody's tomorrow. He started locking the doors to the house. He took my keys. I couldn't find my keys. He locked the house so me and the kids couldn't get in the house. So my sons had to climb through the windows in the evenings for us to get home. Um, when he found out they was doing that, he started locking the windows. He went in my Bible one day because I was faithful. I don't care if I was on welfare or I had a $2 an hour job, whatever job I had. I paid my tithes. I always right. put my tithe envelope home the week before. Put my money in my envelope, put it in the Bible, and I would leave it. One day he took my tithe money, but that same day he had a car accident. I found out about an hour after, and then he had the accident, had to run to the hospital, and you took my tithe. I said, you can't touch God's money. This was his. You mm -hmm. don't do things like, like all of this is going on. We arguing. He trying to keep me out the house, everything. So finally, one day we had a very large argument. I mean, it was huge. Um, and he left with the girl that he was cheating on me with. And he was going to get court papers to try to get a divorce from me. Mm -hmm. Now, I now wait, wait, let, let me let me say this. Also, because I'm like I said, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I always told my ex-husband, don't keep cheating on me. Cause when I get you back, you won't know until I tell you. So I had moments I stepped out too. I had moments I would go do me. I had moments I would cheat on him. You want to play this game? Okay, we could do this. But at the same, I'm still in church. Wait a minute. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I thought he was coming to tell the testimony. <laughs> okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You, you, you was doing God. all this and still serving God. In church. Every Sunday. Singing on the choir. Huh? Oh, okay. Going to Bible college. All right? I'm yeah. learning who God is. Okay? Oh, okay. And did all of this. But I realized somewhere along, the, I gave up one day, was following Prophetess Juanita Bynum. She started teaching on righteousness and holiness. Ah! That's when God came to get me. 
Mm-hmm. I love it. Yes. Won't he send somebody? Yeah. He was send a he Michael. He was send a Gabriel to come see about you. He was send his seraphims and his cherubims to come see about you. He was send a host of angels to come see about his children. Yeah, because truly you are the apple of his eye. Because I wanted truth. I don't want a watered down word. I need the truth because at the end of all of this, I didn't want to be a castaway. I don't want to serve him and then be thrown away at the end of it all. I still got to get in. I want to stand righteous before him. I want to hear him say, well, done my good and faithful, faithful servant. servant. I do not want to live in the flesh. I want it out. So when he caught, when I stood outside that house and I said to God, God, I'll give all of this up just to yeah. serve I'll give it all up to serve ah, you. Yeah. I'll obey you if you allow me to walk out of this right here. See, a lot of times we say that, God, if you just take me out of this, Come on, I'm here. not going to do it no more. And then we go right back around and do the same thing again same to another, another avenue. But I really wanted out. I needed God. And after I heard the truth, I realized I was on my way to hell in church. With gasoline draws on. You was on your way. In my hand, okay? I'm going to hell in church. And I was like, God, that's not what I want. That's not what you called me to. All right, now. That's not what you allow Jesus to die for. Come on, wait a minute. Wait, I got to say and something I'm, right there. I'm crucifying him afresh again. And I get, that's, what, again. that's exactly what I was going to say, sis. Because he already died and he already defeated the enemy. You saying to yourself, God, your blood wasn't good enough the first time. How dare you? My yeah. life. My life at that time was an indictment on God's word. It was an indictment on Jesus' death. It was an indictment on his rising again. It was an indictment for him giving his whole life that I made Come on, yeah. and live more abundantly. That's not, that wasn't the life. I was walking contrary to his word. When he said walk circumspectly to his word. Circumspectly. That, which means to walk carefully. I was not serving him or walking in salvation with fear and trembling. I wasn't doing it. I wasn't work, working that thing out. No, I wasn't. All upright. All upright in the sight of God. And I was you wasn't. You, nowhere was you delighting in his ways. You and were I doing was whatever you wanted to do. Going through. And I was, was wondering doing. why I was still going through. Wait a minute. Let me tell you. Because right there, when you said it the first time. And you said it was it was a cycle. I, immediately, the Holy Ghost gave me soul ties. Absolutely, ah, you was actually Absolutely. you was repeating the cycle through soul ties, and because of your rebellious, you repeating the cycle because you ain't crucified your flesh. Come on, you ain't dead. You still fully alive. Ain't no bones in the closet. The bones are out the closet, full of flesh, fresh meat still on it. We're not dying daily. We're not going to fasting and praying. But God allowed me to hear the truth. And he allowed me to know that he is God. Not me. Not these men. He is God. And there's right. that he won't do for me if I just obey him. <laughs> And and this the key. This the key says you got to the point where the Bible say, "He that hunger and thirst <laughs> and the righteousness shall be filled." And he started filling me. He started to fill me. I got in that word. I got on my face. It was through prayer that I really found him. All right, prayer. I began to seek him, yep. and he showed up for me. It was through prayer and fasting. That I and really, somebody praying for you. Because <laughs> I know there was a grandmother. There was a grandmother somewhere. Grandma, and your mother was somewhere it, praying. My mama, all of them. They had to because they saw me on my road of destruction. This baby not going to make it. She ain't going to make it. Wait a minute. 
You said something right there. And I don't mean to keep stopping you, but every time you say something, the Holy Spirit downloads something in me. It reminds me of Saul ah, when he was on his way of Baba and Diosha in Acts chapter 9, when he was on his road of destruction. God stopped him right in his track. <laughs> and the glory of God began to shine on him and he turned from his wicked ways. <laughs> and when he turned from his wicked ways, it was some stuff he had to go through too. Ah, while he was on his road to Damascus, oh, he had to go there and meet a man by the name of Ananias. Ah, and when he had to meet this man of name Ananias, he was out without sight and without food for three days. Mm -hmm. ah, you don't took me there. Thank you, kind <laughs> spirit. And while he was there, Ananias laid hands on his eyes. And that's when the scales was lifted. And when those scales came, came off my eyes and I began to really see who I was and who I was not. And God began to teach me about generational curses. Yeah. And about checking background of people that you're with and their father and their mother's background and all of that. I was like, well, wait a minute. I got all these kids now. I done did all this stuff. You want to go through the same thing I went through? No, sir. I didn't want to be like my mama. I didn't want to raise my children like my mama. I didn't want to do none of that. I wasn't going to allow another man in my house to rape my children. Like, All right. That was out of the question. So now it is a sanctify yourself. Let me sanctify you holy. I'll wash you in the water and other word. Hmm. Yes. So God, God had to pull me through all of that. And he began to teach me. And I began to pray and I began to fast. And he started giving me a power and authority over the very thing that he had to deliver me from. Yeah. And now guess what? Just like, just like he did Saul, changed his name mm -hmm. and he sent him a, 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 a servant by the name of Ananias. I mm -hmm. heard you say, you heard prophetess Juanita Bining preached. And that's what drew you out. So God will send help. In if the very time, it. he will send help if in the very it. time of need. If huh? you want it. <laughs> if you want it. Thank you, Jesus. If you want to be free, you can be. If you so, want to. It's a choice. It's all a choice. He never took my choice away. Did I slip even after that? Absolutely. But God, in his mercy, he there's this thing going around on Facebook that says, every time I get a boo, God slapped me in the back of my neck with his sandal. Yeah, that be me. Every time I tried, any time I tried to date a guy, God, nope, he cut it immediately. He'll call me out in the church. Like, I was like, well, what happened? Well, wait a minute. And then in your immaturity, right, in Christ, you see other people living ways that you were living or living outside of God's will and outside of God's word. And you look and be like, well, how did they get to get away from that? Mm -mm. I'm calling you to a higher standard yeah. you're called to a place on the hill, but you can't get, you can't ascend to this hill with your hands not clean and your heart you not pure. clean hands and a pure heart. So you can't come up here like that. I called you up here on my mountain. I called you up here on the mountain to pray. How you going to pray and you not clean? How you going to deliver somebody else and you still carrying the same spirit? So I wanted to be free. I wanted to be clean. I needed to be clean because I wasn't going to hell. I'm not going. No. By his grace and his will. I mean, that's a bit far-fetched for me to say because we sin daily. But it is my desire. To no, but you should have what, and God. since it's your desire and you should have what you Please say, God. we got to learn how to prophesy over our own self. It is my I desire. am not Please going God. to hell. It's, I'm going to his, it's not his will for me to be in hell. Hell wasn't okay. created for me. That wasn't created for me. I came from a place. He knew me before he put me in my mama's womb. That's what he told me. So I need to get back to that place. I'm just sojourning through here. I had to go through all the things I've been through. I've been homeless before. I done, I done lost jobs. I done gained jobs. He keep me in a job. He keep me provided for. Clearly, as you can see, I'm a thick one. I'm not hungry. He takes good care of me. He does not allow me to go without. It may not go the way I had 
it playing, but God oh, yeah. is so much better than mine. I would rather go the rough road. I'd rather take the long way around. Long as I'm gonna get to see the king at the end and remain with him. Because we Amen. all here, but we all ain't gonna stay with them. We we ain't and, and it's the scriptures say, What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? You can have this world, you can have it, and all that they're in of it. You can have it. <laughs> why why should I be concerned? I rather have King Jesus material thing when my father owned the hill. A, why? A thousand cattle belong to him. In every bit of it. What I can have whatsoever. I will. All I got to do is ask him. And it's all in his timing. And it's all about me being prepared for it. It's all uh, about what you're going to do with it. Because if he give it to you, what you going to do with it? Are you going to do something that's going to bring him glory? Are you going to go see about these other girls that's out here in these streets that's young mothers too that's going through the same thing? Are you going to go see about them? Are you going to bring some of these young men in? You're going to get somebody to teach them and train them the ways of the Lord? Come on here. Yeah. You're going to talk to the women of God and tell them, come on, baby, you ain't got to do this. I don't care if he is a pastor. You know why? You know why? I'm a, I got to go there. Thank you, kind spirit. The Bible says holiness without no man can see God. And, and that oh, ain't just what you holiness. Oh, okay. Holiness without no man can see God. And I'm talking about mankind, not just woman, child, girl. mankind. Holiness now, without okay, no so man. Now, now we get ready to take a turn because we, a turn. You know, we, we don't want to talk about holiness in this hour. We get to because grace is abounding. But grace is so frustrated. Grace is so tired. Grace is ready to walk out the door because judgment is here. Judgment is here. It's not coming. Judgment is here. Judgment is here and started in the church. You don't know when God's going to call your name. It's almost time for you to get up out of here. You won't even know it. And then the next thing you know, you laid down with somebody last night or you smoked something last night. You drunk something last night. You out here partying. You turning up, okay? You twerking. You doing it all. And the next thing you know, you standing before the Father. And then you hear depart from me. Now, that's those that's in the world. That's those that's out in the street. Now, let's go to the ones that's in the church. I'm talking about the ones that's preaching the word. I'm talking about the ones that's standing up there leading the sheep astray. I'm talking about them too. We all going to get it. We all going to get this judgment from God. It ain't nobody that's exempt from anything that God is moving in in this hour. You want to keep playing COVID-19 here? We still doing us. Uh, flu coming back around, we still doing us. We got all this pneumonia going to come back around with it. We still doing us. Everybody still chasing money. We still doing us. We still doing church instead of everybody getting in the house, getting on their face, seeking God for themselves because that's all he want. He want to remove the idols out your way. That's all he want to do. He want to bring you back into a relationship with him. He is God. Not no man, not no woman, not no church building, not no Anything that you can even think of, drugs, alcohol, boo thing or not, girl, boy, in between, the nonchalant twas y'all out here doing all of it. You, we all nasty. We need to clean up right now. We better clean up quickly because God coming. And when he come, he, I'm telling you, he coming like a thief in the night. We don't, we don't want to do this. We don't want God. We want what's in his hand. We don't want his face. We want what's in his hand. Come on, come on, we want what's in his hand. Y'all, we keep playing with God. We keep playing church. We've been doing it for so long. We've been doing it for so many years. And we think that we're going to get to the end of this thing. And he's going to say, it's an end. The devil is a liar. Okay? Keep playing with God if we want to. We are going to be lost. This, it don't make no sense when you look at all that's going on and we still won't turn. God been telling us to come to the altar for years now. He been telling us to get our bodies together for years now. He been telling us to turn and repent for years now. And we still still doing the same thing. We still won't obey him. We have disobeyed God for so long and we wonder why we're going through what we're going through. We have forced God's hand in this hour to deal with what we're dealing with and how much more you think he's going to do. So he said, you know what? How much more should I afflict you? The whole head is sick. The whole body is sick. If the head is sick, surely the body is sick. So my, why my, 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 you shit. anymore? That's the scripture. We don't read the Bible. We don't get on our face and pray. We ain't thinking about the kids. We're not thinking about the generations to come. We're not thinking about none of that. All we're thinking about is what God can do for us now. What we thinking about is what God can give us now. All we want to do is brand our name. All we want to do is build this and build that. 
instead of just speaking God to get in his will and obey him. But at the end of the day, I promise you, before this thing is over with, people, children are dying. It don't make no sense. But I tell you what, he is still God. He will never change. His word will never change concerning you whatsoever you sow. That's what you're going to reap. If you sow into your flesh, you surely going to reap from your flesh. So you might want to get together and sow to the spirit and go into his word and get on your face and clean your life up. For you be lost. This My is the last hour and we still playing? No, I didn't want that. I didn't want, I can't get left behind. I don't care what nobody else do. And have I had situations? Absolutely. And every time I say, I can't do this. I'm sorry. I don't want no parts of this. I, I belong to God. He ain't going to allow me to do this. I'm one of those children. He don't let me get away from with nothing. Nothing. <laughs> I mean, I got true prophets in my life. If I even think about doing something, I promise you somebody going to call me and say, uh, woman of God, what you doing? Okay. I'm going to need you to get this together. Let, let me say this, sis. Let me say this, sis. Let me say this, sis, because it was a time where I remember growing up. Nope, nope. Mm -mm. It was a time where I remember we used to do something and then it take years for us to reap that harvest, but not anymore. I'm noticing when you do something that's not in the will of God, <laughs> he said, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. And if it you come, know, it's coming back, it's coming back around quicker than you think. And if it it's, is you, it's coming back around. If it's not quicker. you, it's going to be your children. He said that, that you also reap. So you going to reap that same very thing. That same very thing you sow, that same very thing that you're going to reap. If it and this, this is the question, and this is where we are now. This is where we are now, sis. <laughs> we have to do what 2 Chronicles 7 and, 14, 7 and 15 says. If my people who are called by my name. Stop. What was the first word you said? If my people. Uh-uh. Stop. What was the first word? If. if Right. That is a big if. Yeah. But guess what? Guess what? Th this is where this is where his intercessive prayer warriors come in at. This is where the people that's on the battlefield. This is where his charge of hosts of angels come in. This is where he has people on the front wall. This is where his cut barriers. This is where the watchmen. <laughs> This is wait, where wait, this, wait, this is, no, wait, no, 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 no. This is where them, we come in to play. Asleep. Some of them are still sleeping. Some of, some of them are still asleep, but guess what? He still have a remnant out there. That I is think the dream. That this, is this, 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 exactly. So these are the ones I'm talking about. That is praying. These, these are know, the ones I'm talking up. about. This. Yes. These are the ones I'm talking about. The ones that's not taking this lightly. The ones that's going to stand on the wall and don't come down. The ones that's going to be chastised. The one that's going to be ridiculed. The one that's going to be persecuted. The one that the chief built cornerstone rejected. These are the ones that God is raising up and putting in the forefront for such a time as this. These are the ones that he can depend on. Because yes, we all have sinned and come short of his glory. But God has a remnant in the bush. He has some remnant out there that's sold out no matter what. He does. I truly believe in my heart he does. I truly believe in my heart he does. But this is the key. This is the key. When we see these things, I've learned this from past ministries that I was involved with. When I see these things or things that, that he allowed me to see, mm -hmm. I fall down on bending knees mm -hmm. and I take it back to Jesus in prayer. Mm -hmm. And I say, God, whatever it is, whomever it is, mm -hmm. allow your spirit to overtake them in such a way that they will wake them up in the middle of the night and cry out to you. God I'm have your way. I'm the kind, I'm going to get dirty. I'm going in there and get them. With God's love, I'm going to pull them out. Come on now. With the love of a mother, uh, with that broken area in a lot of children's lives, I'm going to get them. I'm going, baby, you don't have to live like this. There is another way. There is. I'm a man that told me all about my life. 
mm-hmm. Let and me if you knew who I was, me. you wouldn't ask me for a drink. If you knew who I was, you'd be saying, can I get something to drink because I'm thirsty? If you knew who I was, you would be drink bringing me a glass. Man. Come see him. Come let see me, your let man. Let me tell you about a man that's changed my life. Let me tell you about a man that was, I was in the same place you was, and he snatched me out of that horrible pit. He snatched me out of that dark place. Come, let me, come, let me go get, I want to get dirty. I want to go get in and get him. Like, come on, baby. Because, you know, a lot of times people are missing support. People are missing love. People are missing people being there for them. They're missing people walking them through some of the dark areas of their life. They miss all of that. So, you know, they feel abandoned. That abandonment Mm -hmm. thing, it is very real. It is very prevalent in the kingdom. Um, It's very prevalent in the lives of many. And if they just have somebody that really genuinely care, don't want nothing from them, there's no bad motive. There's none of that. I don't want nothing from you. God's going to take care of me. I promise you he will. I don't need nothing from you. I don't need your money. I don't need none of that. God will see about me. Mm -hmm. Go on up. That's what that's what we supposed to do. We supposed to go out in the highways and the byways and get them right. And sometimes the highway and the byway is right there in the church. Come on now, it's right there in the church, and they want to be free, but nobody's giving them the truth. Nobody's giving them the segue out of something that they're already locked into. Nobody's giving them the keys. Nobody's giving them the tools. Then you gotta take them over and say, you know what? This situation right here, we might need to walk through therapy. But if you need to go to therapy, I'll go with you. Come on. I'll go with you. I'll pick you up. I'll take you out there. It's nothing that we can't walk through together, but we, we got to be in unity. We have to hear from the Lord. You got to know who you are. You got to know where to put your hands and where not to put your hands. You mm-hmm. got to know who wants it. But now you just have to ask them, do you want this? Now, sometimes you get a hard case where they have been so abused, they've been so mistreated, they've been abandoned, they've been rejected so badly that when someone come in with genuine love, they kind of fight it a bit. Mm-hmm. What you want? Or what's this about you? Why, why mm-hmm. you? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Well, where you come from? And what, mm, it's something about this one. And, you know, all this all kind of, that's not my heart. Right, right. And that's not the heart of God. Or the heart of the Father. I come with the heart of the Father. I come with the love of God in my heart. No, let's help you get to a better place. Let's help you get from this place that you were in, that you've been in for so long. I I don't have a whole lot, but what I do got, silver and gold, I have not. Oh, okay. Silver and gold, I have none, but such as I have, I give unto thee. And I got Jesus. I got his word, I got his teaching, and I got his wisdom. I'll give you that. I got some money. I'll give you that too. I've been, I don't went broke for people before. I don't went in a negative for people before being a giver I, because I don't want nothing from them. God will take care of me. God, I'm, this is a seed. It's a seed I sow. Yeah. Not that I owe. It's I seed. got a seed in the ground. That's it. It's just that simple. So when this thing come back around, I extend mercy because I need mercy. I and it's so great because I need grace. Come you on need, now. You give what you need. You know, it's gonna yield its fruit. It's, it's gonna yield its fruit and it's due season. All I'm trying to do is live in the fruit thereof that God has already given to me. And that's I'm giving back to his people. These are his people. You don't mistreat God's people. You surely don't. He said, I bless them that bless you, and I will curse them that curse you. They're his souls, and there's some of them are lost souls. So if somebody can, like me, if God could give me a word to go see about them, I'm going. If God could give me a word in their life, I'm going to speak it. If God could take use me to bring about deliverance in their life, I'm going to walk them through deliverance. Sis, let me, okay. I, I appreciate you being transparent, being honest, being open. I mean, you was just, you was feeding the people. And I know that someone came out of darkness just by your testimony, because surely if they did it, if he did it for you, he has no respectable person. He has no respectable person. So before we close this out, my last and final question to you is, what would you say to the people now who might still be in bondage? Who still, who, who, wait a minute. (laughs) <laughs> she went in and said, 
Amen. I, for the kingdom of God that. is at hand. For the Come kingdom of that. God. But I mean, what if what if they they dealing with a struggle and it's hard? But leave the people with some encouraging words for when it do get hard. Continue to look towards the hills from which cometh your help. When it do get hard, pray and seek his face and do what James 4 and 7 said. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Encourage the people. Give them some inspiration. What would you lead the people from where we at right now? What would you say to them to keep pressing? towards the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Knowing that the suffering of this present time can't be compared to what will be revealed in them through Jesus Christ. Encourage the people. I would tell everyone, um, though it may be dark, though it may not necessarily look good, it may not necessarily look the way you planned your life, He's still God. And there is a plan for you. If you suffer with them, you'll reign with them. My God. Go after the God that apprehended you. Apprehend him. That's all I did. I want, I wanted to apprehend that which apprehended me. That's what Paul did. Yes. Apprehend him. Chase him. Seek him. Thirst for him. Because the truth of the matter is. You really are thirsty for God. You may be feeling it with everything else, but your thirst and your hunger is really for God. That emptiness, that void, that's God's play. Go after him. My Find someone that belongs to God. Let them pray with you. Let them walk you through. It gets rough. You're going to fall. Get back up. Don't stay there. Don't waddle in that thing. Turn around. Come on back to God. He is a loving father. He Thank has you. many of prodigal children that he's waiting for with open arms. He loves you. God loves you. We God are so void of his love, which causes us to go to a place or to a thing or to a vice, really seeking the love of God. My God. Come back to God. Come back Come all to God. Come back. If you never know him, get to know him now. <laughs> now, now is the time. Me. The time. Now is the time. Right now. Upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against. And if the gates of hell is not going to prevail, then you got to be built on the rock. If you're not built on the rock of Jesus Christ, then the gates will prevail. But it can't if you built on Jesus Christ. He is the Lord. Make him ruler, master of your life, Lord of your life. See, it's, it's areas in our lives that he's not master. He is the Lord, but he is not our Lord. He is not the master over every area in our life. When he does that, you have submitted. You have surrendered. Surrender yourself. Yield. It's the Holy Ghost. Yield to the breaking. It don't feel good, but I promise you, greater is He that's in you. Greater is on the other side of this. It's on the after. you. Greater is available. You have access when you come to Jesus Christ. You have access to come out of these doors. The keys were in His hand. He come to give them to you. The abundant life is available for you. You don't have to go out in the streets and get it. You don't have to go through a man to get it. You don't have to go through a woman to get it. You don't have to play nobody to get it. You don't have to manipulate nobody to get it. You ain't got to lie on nobody to get it. You don't have to do none of that. You ain't got to be cruddy. You ain't got to be filthy. You ain't got to turn on nobody. You ain't got to use nobody. You don't got to go through no back door to get it. You got to come through the front door, baby. You got to come through the gate. You got to come <laughs> through Jesus Christ for his feet. He's the you got to come through the door. door. You got to. And it's gonna work out for your good because all of it is working together. It's for your good. He said, No for man coming to the father but all by me. It. You got to come through him. You can't go around it, you can't go to the side, you can't come to the back. You got to go through the door. And then when you come in the door, you mess up, 
it's okay. Go on back. To God, just be honest. God, I like this. He's, he's married to the backside. I, I need you right here in this area, in my weakness. I need you to strengthen me here. Mm -hmm. You got a glory in your weakness because he's even stronger. He knows. He knows your uprising as well as your downsetting. He, he knows the way that you take. He so, knows your heart. Get, get a clean heart. You got to be like David. Have mercy on me, oh God. <laughs> Psalms Blood 51 and 10. Friend. Listen, Psalms Blood 51 and 10. Friend. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. That's the turning back around to God. Psalm 51 and 10. Create within me a clean heart and renew and the, renew right, the spirit right spirit within me. My God. So I want the right spirit. That's all I want. And then I can walk up rightly before you. The right spirit is his spirit. And no good thing will you withhold from me. And I, as I delight myself in you. In your ways. <laughs> hey, sis, this has been awesome and wonderful. I thank God for you, woman of God. And I thank God for you for being so transparent and being obedient and giving the people back the words that God given unto you. Before we go, before we go, you y'all already know. Y'all already know how I do this. And I'm just going to ask my sister to pray us out. But before I ask her to pray us out, if there's one, ah, because I this this broadcast would be in, in vain if I don't extend invitation to discipleship, because our sole purpose is to exalt the Savior. Ah, let the evangelize the sinners, <laughs> mm -hmm. and the edifying of the saints got to come forth. So, if there's one. If you have the desire to come out amongst them and be ye separated, I just for need I need for you to put down there, type down there, I want to be saved. I want to be saved. And I'm going to reach back out to you. And if you're in the metropolitan area, DC, Maryland, or Virginia, there are local assembly church that's here in the area that's preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and the Holy Writ where you can be part of and be a family of and commune. But if you're in the metropolitan area close to Washington, D.C., I reside, myself and my sister evangelist Nicole Bonds, we attend the Temple of Praise. International Church of Fellowship, where the address is 700 Southern Avenue, Southeast Washington, D.C. You're more than welcome to come. Southern Avenue, 700 Southern Avenue, Washington, D.C. You are more than welcome to come there, where I bishop is Bishop Glenn A. Staples, and our pastor is Pastor Walter Lamar Staples. So by any means, you're more than welcome. And if that's you, just put in the comments, I want to be saved. And all you have to do is repeat after me. Romans 10 and 9. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that God has truly raised his son from the dead. And for that, you shall be saved. What are you confessing? What are you believing? John 3, 16. Ah, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I pray that this broadcast set someone free. I pray that this broadcast hmm, sent you right back to God. I pray that this broadcast brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Yeah. And before we close out, sis, mm -hmm. Minister Bonds, if you can just give us a quick two to three minute prayer and then we just going to end the broadcast. Mm -hmm. I love you. Did First of all, I want to thank everyone who chimed in, who clicked tag and shared, who came and was being a part of this broadcast, who, who, um, Shared, shared the broadcast, who, who did a watch party. I thank you all behind the scenes. And I have to especially give a shout out to Christina Brown because she is there. When I say she's always there, she's always there. Yes. She's always there. She is always sharing the, the flyers, the posts, and sharing the broadcast. I, I am truly, eternally yeah, grateful you, for God. her. She, I mean, when I say she's working behind mm -hmm. the scenes, and I'm talking about with a spirit of humility, 
humility. I'm talking about with a spirit of being humble that she don't, her name don't need to be called. And she probably get me today for calling out her name, but I have to give honor where honor is due. And to, to God be the glory, sis. But I promise you, I mean, just go ahead, let the Lord use you. A quick two to three minute prayer and then we out of here. Once again, woman of God, I thank God for you. I thank, I thank God, God for you, you sis. Mm -hmm. God, and God. tell mama, tell mama, I said, hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I won't further this any longer, sis, if you don't mind taking us to the throne of grace. Father, we thank you for being God. We thank you for your mercy. You. We bless you for your grace. We honor you for calling our name, God, and allowing us to hear you. Now, Father, on today, let every word that was spoken, God, let it open the heart and the ears of anyone that may hear it, that needs your fire, thank that you. needs your deliverance, that needs your consecration. Father, we thank you, oh God, for calling your people back to a place of holiness and yeah. righteousness. Father, let your word, oh God, permeate every ounce of our being, oh God. Change us now, God. Father, let them hear the clarion call in the spirit, Father. And bring you to the truth, Father. God, we thank you for the spirit of truth abiding. Father, we thank you for your love surrounding them. Father, go get the lost, Father. Send your people out to get them, oh God. Call them into the truth, Father. Call them into your ark of safety. Call them into your strong tower, Father. Father, cover them with your feather. Father, move by your spirit. God. Father, we thank you, oh God, for being merciful in this hour. We thank you for yeah. being kind. We thank you for using your woman of God, Father, to open up the airways, oh Father, to bid your people to come. Come to your holiness. Come to your righteousness. Come to your altar. Father, you, show up all that they know, Father. Father, let deliverance be their portion. Father, yeah, let the Lord be their bread, Father. Yeah. Let your will be their meat, God. And we thank you now, God, and we give you glory and we forever honor you. God, get the glory out of their life. Father, get the glory out out of this broadcast. Father, get the glory out of the life of this here, your daughter that's being used, oh God, in this hour to win Thank souls you. for your purpose. Father, let there be nothing that she's standing need of. Father, let there be nothing that her heart desires that you don't get to her. Father, as she continuously delight herself in your way. Father, I thank you, oh God, for greater wisdom, greater knowledge, oh God, greater windows opening up for her, oh God, to do your will and bid your people to come. Now, Father, we thank you for every salvation. We thank you, oh God, for every heart turning back to you and we forever give you glory we forever give you honor and now unto him who is able to present us flawless before the throne of grace and give us your kingdom come in this hour and let your will continuously be done in jesus name we pray amen Amen. 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 My God, my God, my God, my God, my God, we thank you. Oh, we give God, we thank you. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. Yes, Father. Thank you, God. God, we thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Ah, yes, Father. Yes, God. Thank you. Eh, sis, I love you. God, my man, the Osha. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Ah, thank you, Lord God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're greater than any doubt. Thank you, God. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. We reverence you, oh God. Thank you. And we bless you. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Yes, God. We thank you, God. We give you glory. Huh? We give you honor, oh God. Ah! Bless your name, God. Thank you, God. Ah, that you it's snatched her up out of the darkness, oh God. Yes, God. It's an honor and a thank privilege. You, oh, thank you, God. Come on, I bless you. Because you. you didn't have to call me. Yes, Lord. You didn't have to do it. God, we thank you for your blood. We thank you for washing us. Yes, God, we repent for anything that's displeasing in this. Yes. God, cleanse us. Thank oh, you, Jesus. Lord. Thank you, God. Wash us in your word. Mm -hmm. Hi, yeah, Bundy. Come to drink from your well. Yes, Lord. thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Yeah, sister, sister, sister. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. oh, it, it's, God. It's, 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 it's enough said that it's, it's done. In the words of my father, <laughs> it is finished. It is finished. <laughs> yes, please. It is finished. Please. It is finished. Please. <laughs> please. Once again, once again, uh, uh, 
to the Thank testimonial you. Tuesdays family. Thank you. Family, I think uh, I love you with the agape love. love. And please, 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 I'm, I'm going to say it again. Click, tag, and share, and turn on your notifications for Testimonial Tuesdays. I will only be doing Testimony Tuesdays on the Testimonial Tuesdays page. Oh, and also, by the grace of God, thank you, Lord God, he's allowed me to also go even further in ministry and we now are connected with youtube um for some reason it couldn't get up today up and running where you can log on broadcast things of that nature but i still will be lifting this video up on youtube all you have to do is go to testimonial tuesdays with minister michelle wood and subscribe i think within the first 24 hours to eight days or a week it's gonna take a while but nevertheless you still can see the video you still can subscribe to the channel you still can be a part so for some reason if you can't get through testimonial Tuesdays you can also go on um YouTube once everything is is complete and up and running to God be the glory I love you all I love you all I love you all sis once again thank you God bless you thank you I love you all thank God bless you and good night good night I love you more I love you God bless Thank you, Jesus. Mama Mandi Osha. Thank you, Father. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God.